Hey guys, Metal Jesus here, and I'm back again with my good bud Troy. Hey, it has been a while since I we've done this. I know, too long. Yes, and people <laughs> have been uh, requesting it of both of us, yes. saying, when are you going to do another vinyl pickups video? <sighs> it's been too long. Yeah. Now, if you don't remember who Troy is, because it has been it's been a couple of years. Yeah, a couple of years. I know. So Troy is a really good friend of mine. We played in a band together. Mm -hmm. I was thinking the other day, you are the one who showed me how to play Cemetery Gates from, right. from Pantera. That's right. It took me forever to learn how to do those squeals. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Troy also is a DJ at, I think, one of the best radio stations in the country. You know how people always complain like, oh, corporate radio is all the same. That is not the case where he works at KXP. It is all listener driven That's and right. DJ driven. That's right. And you've been on my show a couple yeah. of times in the past. I've texted him and he has played my request. That's right. Yes. That's <laughs> as right. weird as it might be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you uh, you have that open door. Oh, you know? thank you. So, thank yes, you. and we got to get you back in there. But I had I you on, like, I think it was like International Video Game Day. Yeah, I had you oh, on. Dude, I, I remember that. that was awesome. Yeah. So we're going to do a vinyl pickups video, and uh, I kind of feel like you should go first, since sure. you are the, the guest. And, and I want to say, I do have uh, mostly vinyl, but at okay. the very end, I did buy a game, a uh, collector's edition of this game I've wanted for a long time, but hmm. I'm saving it till the end. I don't know what this is. Yeah. Okay, cool. And, and yes, once again, we don't know what each no, other has, no. so we're just going to do this. Yeah, right? and, and it, it, I have a little bit of everything. A lot of it's rock and metal, but there is going to be some surprises in this. Oh, I've got some pretty wild stuff. I, you always time. do. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Actually, I will start with a, a game soundtrack. Okay. That is a game that I have been addicted to uh, for quite some time now. I can't stop playing it, but the soundtrack is awesome as well. Hmm. And I'm talking about a puzzle game called Grindstone. Oh, okay. and, you mentioned this. And huh. the artwork is awesome, oh, not yeah. only uh, on the record here, but also the game itself. Oh. And it's this awesome company called I Am 8-Bit. Okay. And I Am 8-Bit... Uh, they put out a lot of soundtracks, actually. The, yeah. Their whole website is, is... They've been doing that a lot lately. Mm -hmm. And oh. uh, colored vinyl, and you get this booklet. It looks like it's a coloring... It's like a coloring book. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> wow. And the game is very wacky and hmm. very creative, and I just love I Am 8-Bit's, like... The way that they present and yeah. press these vinyl, it's very high quality, it beautiful artwork. And see, this is made to look so that you can take a picture, like you can pretend. Oh, okay, with the shoulders. And, and I've seen lots of people online, to, yeah, <laughs> with their still shots of uh, a photo of the the main character huh. of well, this. I have not played the game, but uh, that is a ringing endorsement. Oh, okay, so splatter. Wow, nice. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah, okay. And you can tell it's like 180 gram or something like too. It's like a it, little bit thicker. It's a little thicker and the sound quality is perfect and just a great soundtrack and a great addictive game. I'm going to have to Very check Very creative. Game. All right, you sold me. All right. All right. Uh, my first pick here, we were playing it earlier. Ah, uh, yes. That is Dream Theater, Number of the Beast. They recorded this live back in 2002. So the thing with Dream Theater is that uh, about 20 years ago, when they would go in, on tour, if they had enough ticket sales to play two nights, mm -hmm. the second night they would do an entire album uh, it, well, in, in its entirety. Yeah. So they've covered The Who, they did Pink Floyd, Dark, the, Dark Side of the Moon, they did a like, Deep Purple album, and they did the entire Number of the Beast album. Well, yeah, so I come over to your house and I'm like, yeah. wait, this isn't Iron Maiden. Yeah, it sounds what a little this? bit... <laughs> yeah. Cool. They have like different variations of yes. yeah, and styles and of, yeah. That's yeah. what's really cool about it is that it's a dream theater. They're a progressive metal band, and so and you know it's it's a guitarist, and then they have Jordan Rudis on keyboards, and so they actually like we, I was playing you earlier, uh, Gangland mm -hmm. is this kind of jazzy version of Gangland, and also like a. Uh, Children of the Damned, oh, yeah. they, they play that with a grand piano in the beginning. Cool. Like, it's so cool sounding. Yeah, that it's very, very cool. All yeah. Right. So uh, Dream Theater's been putting out some of this kind of, like, uh, uh, you know, supplemental stuff lately. Mm -hmm. uh, especially during the pandemic. Seems like every couple months they would put out some, of the, like, weird release like this. Cool. Love yeah. It. I was happy to get that. All right. So the next thing I'm going to show you is definitely bizarre. And okay. this was gifted to me. And now, when, when you say bizarre, I do believe that. <laughs> <laughs> but it was gifted to me, I will say it is in the top five greatest gifts I've ever gotten in my life. Well, you're hyping it up here. And okay. I have to pull out uh, my notes to, to explain this, but... Okay. So, I uh, dabble in doing uh, 
comedic music parody. Yes, you do. Yes. Yeah. If so. anybody's followed him on Instagram, like you did a parody of uh, I'm going hungry. Oh, the, yeah. The, yeah, the hunger strike. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was a Christmas sign. Uh, <laughs> just send me money. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, what I did, well, I have this uh, fake bro metal band or new metal band, okay. if you will with my friend Cody, and we call ourselves Voltage Periscope. That's a pretty cool name. And we only have a couple songs out there in the YouTube world, but it is sort of parodying uh, bands like Linkin Park or Disturbed and okay. stuff. It's parodying those bands. Okay. Uh, you could say an homage. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah I'm and sure. And so uh, uh, we have a song called Bearing Down On Me, and in the video, the music video, uh, I have a braided like goatee, like down to here, and uh, uh, met my this my friend uh, Bailey, who works at that I am eight bit place that put out that grindstone oh, record. Okay. But also my dear friend Bailey, and uh, they have a custom lab cut made on a Presto six N from the nineteen forties. I don't know what any of that means. Yeah, I, I, say, I don't. I don't know what that means. I okay. don't know what that means. But uh, Bailey at Hocus Bogus sent me okay. and made this on this machine that I was just uh, talking about and in the mail I get this record okay so what you're gonna show me was made on this device it was made on this device and it is my face from the music video with the braided goatee and it plays the song bearing down on me <laughs> so I wonder if they could use this to make those flimsy kind of like a uh, magazine album remember like oh i have more to show you oh yes okay. <laughs> <laughs> but wow. yes you're correct and it's uh pretty much i guess uh, uh they mentioned made of plastic yeah yeah there we go and it plays the song that is hilarious that's uh, it. And so yeah it's probably that device probably is able to to cut records it really really thin mm -hmm. like without, without going too deep into the a, a groove or something i would think so yeah. and, and it's funny playing it because this yeah, this yeah thing just say. spins around <laughs> and uh but it plays plays the song uh bearing down on me from our our band voltage periscope that and it is was like the pretty coolest thing. weird yeah, yeah 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 bailey just thought that video and song was was too, too good and <laughs> so, so how many of these are there out there is this, this is it this is it yes it's one of one. wow okay that's cool. one of one yes well there huh. you go <laughs> well i don't know if i can top that <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a very specific, yeah, yeah, yeah. specific thing <laughs> this is not going to be anything quite like that but this is uh so this is nothing like that but this is an album I was really excited to get. So you, as you know, I'm a huge Opeth fan. Yes. And they've been going back into their catalog and kind of re-releasing some of their earlier albums, both remastered and just kind of putting them out on vinyl because they're so collectible. Okay. And so this is their third album. It's called My Arms, Your Hearse, which is a... It's a concept album about a ghost, a, a guy who's dead who doesn't actually realize that he's dead yet. Mm -hmm. Very deep stuff. Blue vinyl there, it. gorgeous. Beautiful. I'm a massive fan of Opeth. This is one of the, the kind of holy grail albums that I really wanted to get from them because I absolutely love it. Um, did not disappoint. Heavy, gnarly, spooky and weird and just good old Opeth. Love so, it. Yeah, I was awesome. very happy to get that. And very look cool. look at that, like you can barely see her face oh, there. I would have never yeah. seen it. That's so death metal. Had you not pointed <laughs> yeah. it out, I would have never seen that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That is awesome. So there you go. All right. Uh, what else do we got? Okay, so I, I had to bring this. I bought this because of the album cover alone. Had no idea who this artist okay. is. Had no I've idea what before. the music sounded like. But look at this album cover from Kane Roberts. Oh, yes, yes, Kane Roberts. I know. I love, yeah. First of all, he's like the <laughs> buffest metal shredder dude ever. Like, George Lynch wants to be this guy, right? Yeah, yeah. Kane Roberts, I think, I'm trying to remember the history of him. I want to say he might have played with Alice Cooper I at think, some point. I, th I think that is correct. Yeah. Yeah, Alice Cooper. And, uh, the, and the fact that it's a machine gun guitar. A machine gun guitar. <laughs> I mean, was he like the Rambo of 80s shredders? I have no idea. <laughs> but he should have been. I, that is hilarious. Have but, you listened to it? Um, yes, I have, actually. I mean, you know what? It's not bad. I thought yeah. it was... I mean, he is a, a fantastic guitar player. Yeah. But uh, look at that picture right there. I Dude, mean, that is Rambo. They really could have just come off the set of Conan the Barbarian. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, they, you know... <laughs> Or you know, or, or maybe like Mad Max or something yeah, like that. Totally. 
But you, when you wow. see that cover in a thrift store or oh, at a record yeah. store, hell, you just buy it. Hell it, yeah. yeah. Okay. So there you and go. And so you, you have that like on your wall? Framed. It is a converse, conversation <laughs> yes, starter. It is. Yeah, yeah. It is, uh, everybody talks I about bet. it. I yeah. bet. That's so funny. Yeah. All right. Well, next up for me, kind of in that same vein a little bit, I messaged you about this band when I discovered them. Oh, yes, yes. The Reckless Love, and they put out an album, uh, I think it was like last year, called Turbo Rider. Not Dude. lover, rider. However, mm -hmm. this is for fans of that kind of era of Judas Priest. I love that era of Judas Priest. Dude. Not a popular opinion back I, in the day. But. I'm, I'm with, so this is very much kind of like, this is a newer Finnish band that is playing that sort of style of mid to late 80s hair metal, essentially. They do a smoking cover of Bark at the Moon from Ozzy Osbourne Ooh, on here. Cool. Yeah, it's a really, I love this album Beautiful. so much. Actually, last year, I, you know how, you know how when at the end of the year, your music app gives you like the, the albums you listen to the most? Yeah. This was number one. Oh, awesome. Yeah, so ringing endorsement for me. It's if it's for people who like Judas Priest Turbo album, if you like the 5150 album from Van Halen, you know how they kind of have those electronic toms? Yep. Very much in that style. So oh, awesome! That's in my wheelhouse. I would love to see these guys live. I think this would just be so. It's, it's a very happy, energetic album. So that is so cool. Yeah. Thank you for reminding me of this. Yeah, you'll yes. have to check it out. Yes. All right. What do I got for you next here? Well, I wanted to bring this because. Uh, do you remember all the controversy around oh, this yes. album Dude, and its yeah. album cover, the original album Isn't cover? Isn't silly today? I mean, it's hilarious. Yeah, yeah. But, um, the fact that the tongue was they had to They had to cover it up and... Yeah. It, it, well, not only was... Yeah, the tongue was mm -hmm. too suggestive and it was, like, demonic. Yeah. But, but the real controversy was... Uh, uh, all over the country, people were saying if you flipped it upside down and covered that it is this is like Satan with a, his nose. You can see a nose oh and it's his like big beard. <laughs> okay. And so if you cover it a, a certain way, apparently this is like you know Satan's face with a beard. And uh, you I know mean, I can kind of see that I guess, but that is something that I think was just you, made up. I can't go over the fact it's poison, which is like happy party '80s music. Like yeah. there's this. I mean. That is so far removed from anything that they, you know, are about, yeah. right? But this was so controversial. I, I actually, I love that album. Oh, album. absolutely! I remember a huge part of my upbringing. Yeah, me too. Mm. That's a really good album, actually. Yeah. There you go. All right. Well, now is something definitely different than that. So when I was on my road trip through Oregon, uh, somebody mentioned that I check out this album, and it was not in my wheelhouse. I didn't. I wasn't familiar with it at all. It's Turnstile. Have you yes. heard this? Yes, absolutely. I would think you guys would actually probably play. Some we of do this. play Turnstile. So. This is, they call it kind of like hardcore or punk. To me, it's, it's, it's very, um, gosh, it almost sounds like Jane's Addiction to me sometimes. Like cool. some of the better parts of Jane's Addiction. Mm -hmm. It's an extremely good album. Like I, I was so happy that someone told me to, 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 you know, put this on my, um, on my stereo while I was going on this road trip. Cause we listened to it a lot and it's really, really good. Awesome. Yeah. So I don't really know much about the band. I, this is my first album I've ever gotten into them, but, uh, I'm a fan. So this is a great album. We'll have to put that on actually after a while. I love when you get into a new band. I love it. <laughs> yeah. You know, a new era, a new ish. Yeah. I, you know, I, I'm, I'm open to it. It's yeah. just that I think kind of like you, I've heard so much. And so it does, it does have to kind of stand out a little bit or be something absolutely special. You know what I mean? And so this is one of those albums where I'm like, yeah, this is actually really good. Cool. Yeah. Yes. Thank you for sharing. All right. Where do I go now? Um, I am going to say, well, okay, speaking of newer artists okay. that you and I have both uh, mentioned to each other that we love, and okay. because I was playing her on KEXP, oh. and you texted me, you're like, I love this new Allison Goldfrapp. Dude, every time that you are on in the morning, you will either play her solo stuff or, mm -hmm. or Goldfrapp. Oh, oh, Gold I know, yeah. I, I love it. I mean, it's so good. So Yeah, it's uh, her voice is fantastic yeah. and uh, production-wise, and it's got that a hint of like 80s electronic music yeah. that you and I have also bonded over. Yeah. And uh, her, vo her vocals her. are so cool because they're very, uh, they're almost like a whisper sometimes, or they're very sultry. They're very, I don't know, there's something about her. 
Uh, I like the old Goldfrapp stuff where it was a little bit more creepy, mm -hmm. but then the newer dancey stuff that she does is, again, another great album for the for the car. Yep. Like, this is an album you just put it on, you know, and you're just cruising, or you're, you're driving too fast. Yeah, it's actually a good point. <laughs> yeah, it's a great yeah. travel album. Cool album Thank cover, you. too. Yes. All right, now for something that, you, you know how you have those albums where people will recommend them, and you just, you get you, you don't know what it is. Like, you can't. You, you, you try to want it, you, you, you want to like it, you're supposed to like it, and it's just not doing it for you. And then when I was down in Oregon, mm -hmm. I went into a record store, mm -hmm. and they're playing this music. I was like, God, this is awesome. What is this? And she's like, oh, it's Jeff Beck, Blow by Blow. Oh, cool. Yeah, and so classic. A total classic, but I was never able to get into it for some reason until I had that moment standing in that record store listening to this, and it's amazing. So Orange vinyl? Yeah, the, the thing oh. for me is that I don't necessarily really like jazz, or at least I didn't like jazz up until probably about 10 years ago or so. I really had to kind of figure it all out. And now I can go back and I can really appreciate this. Like this is a fantastic album. It's got a bunch of different styles in there. They cover a, like a, Stevie Wonder wrote one of the songs on here. Cool. I, you know, growing up, I'll admit, it was somebody I just didn't listen to. Yeah. Because I was listening to my Metallicas. Joe and, Satriani. Yeah, I was listening to all that. Yeah. Jeff Beck sounded, I thought it was like your parents' music or something. Yeah. But then I see his name come up in so yeah. many I interviews. So many people were influenced by Jeff Beck. 100%. I've heard many people say, like, one of the greatest of all time. Yeah. I finally listened to it, and I'm just like, ah, I see what they're saying. Yeah. yeah. So this is an album where, I, again, I was like, oh, okay. And I I've been listening to it pretty much every day since. Mm -hmm. It's just one of those albums where it's a lot of variety to it, a lot of depth. It's got that jazz, but also it's got some funk and some R&B in here. I, I get it. Yep. I'm a fan. I like it. All right, so uh, earlier you were talking about those records that were like floppy. Yeah, what do they call those? Like flexi disc. Flexi disc? Flexi yeah. Sure. Well, I have one. Okay. And <laughs> this was sent to me as a as a gift from the local record label Light in the Attic Records, who do a lot of reissues. So I, I get in the mail like, at the radio station, okay. and, and only a few people got these, apparently. And it came with a note to explain what this is. Okay. And so uh, wow. the, the note right here is mentioning that Lou Reed of the Velvet Underground Whoa. back in 1965 uh, he was demoing songs on his own, and he would send uh, actual five-inch reel-to-reel -reel in the mail to himself to copyright oh, these yeah. demos. People but do this that. Uh, this version right here of well, I got it. It's waiting for the man. Waiting for the man. Yeah, so it's an original song. demo of waiting for the man, but it sat on a shelf for 50 years. Wait, wait, wait. So this right here, this song, the, this version of this song, and this is the first time it ever was put out into the public and released oh, shit. into so, the public. Okay. I should probably be careful touching. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's okay. It's all right. Um, but yeah, so it is a 50 years unheard version of what I'm Waiting for the Man by a very young Lou Reed and Light in the Attic pressed of very few of these for, for people to hear. I, I'm sure somebody's uploaded it on the internet yeah, or something. Yeah, sure. But um, it was a very special gift to get. And I huh. hadn't seen the Flexi oh, yeah. disc in a long time. And yeah, I mean, well, well, because, you know, they're technically not great. <laughs> because, yeah. because there's not a lot of space there for... You know, you, you want a little bit more depth in the groove to get better fidelity. Yep. However, as a kid, you would get these on like cereal boxes and stuff like that, and it was actually a pretty cool little thing. It was know? cool, yeah. Yeah, like I think Boy, had, that really dates us, doesn't it? It does. Yeah, I, I think I had a Star Wars like Scholastic book that had a flexi disc inside of it, and it was again, it was crap, but yeah, I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. All right, now, what do you got next? Next up, oh, oh dude. I, okay, I have to ask you a question here. Do you like Pink Floyd? Yes. Okay, what's your favorite Pink Floyd album? Uh, it it oscillates between Metal and Dark Side of the Moon. Interesting. Okay, good. Well, both good answers. Uh, you know, I love that period as well. Metal is so good. That's when they really started getting kind of progressive and, and finding that sort of 70s sound that they have. Mm -hmm. Dark Side, Wish You Were Here, uh, The Wall. 
I think for me though, I gotta go animals. I knew you were gonna say that. I know. And I just interviewed a band, this young band, and they said Animals was their favorite Pink Floyd record. I'm like, well, who in the world is this their favorite Pink Floyd record? And here you are. I know. Explain it's Explain this to me. So first of all, I love Pink Floyd. Yeah. Really, really love Pink. So there, so. For me to say it's my favorite, it, it's not that the others are bad, it's just that this one is so dark mm -hmm. and weird, and honestly, he's angry. He's, mm -hmm. It's a very political album, and it, but the reason why I want to mention it is because they also released a surround sound version of this. Oh, cool. Dude, in here, wow. with that, this album is epic. Whoa. Epic. Oh, this is cool. It okay. sounds so good. Uh, so. Your system, what were we playing earlier? What was that game? The shoot? Oh, yeah, yeah, Proteus. Proteus. Yeah, with the speakers and stuff. Y yeah. yeah, I was like, am I inside the video game? Dude, so dude, you, you got it locked in. I'm telling there. you, surround sound albums like this are amazing. And so to get one of my favorite albums wow. in surround sound, and they also release it on vinyl as well. Uh, uh, may we listen to this when you're shooting B roll? Absolutely. Yeah, okay. <laughs> You'll love it. The traditional B roll hangout. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, this is great. I need to revisit Animals. I, and, you know, it, it, I just it, haven't given it the chance it deserves. And, and I think it's because it's surrounded by other albums that were just frankly more popular and they had hits on them. Mm. This album didn't really have a hit per se. Right. But you definitely want to check it out. I cool. think you'll love it. Awesome. All right, next up for me is another album I was very excited to get. This came out, I think, a year or two ago. Arch Enemy, Deceiver. Yes, you have told me Deceiver, about this one, too. So. Yeah, you've played me this. Uh, her vocals are, like, in insane, right? Yeah, and what's great about this album is that, you know, they're known kind of for, for their cookie monster vocals. However, what they, they, they let her do on this album, which I don't know if they've done in any others, is actually sing. So mm -hmm. on a couple songs in here, she actually mixes it up a little bit. Cool. And sings and also does the cookie monster vocals it's an amazing band uh you know shout out to anna who originally turned me on to arch enemy yes yeah, so uh, anna probably... just stopped by kexp a couple days ago oh that. really yeah uh anna and katie were, oh, okay. were in town and they're like can we stop by the station so i just saw anna. oh did you yeah and both well, of them they're great she's the one who sat me down and she's like jason you've got to check out arch enemy and we sat on the couch and she played me a bunch of the songs and at the time i was like I don't know, man. They're pretty, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not always into like Cookie Monster vocals. However, yeah. now I'm a fan. I buy all their albums and this is a, this is a really good one. Just so. looking at the artwork, uh, if I hadn't heard it, I would say to myself, this looks like a band that was built for Metal Jesus. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. All right, my turn? Yep. All right. Uh, my next one is not a flexi disc. Oh, yeah, bummer. Sorry. Okay, well, you own all the other ones, so uh, yeah, yeah, you true. ran out. It's very true. Um, speaking of the radio station, um, this is live at KEXP hmm. Volume 10, and KEXP has a series of these. Okay. And it's that. live performances from the past uh, however many years. Yeah. And we hadn't done one for years. And uh, and we hadn't pressed vinyl, so we uh, oh, really? we make these for um, we made them for uh, record stores and and, uh, and and also people that uh, you know donate to KXP. They got a copy of it for oh. one of our fundraising drives oh, okay. or whatnot. But uh, I just love these because they're unique, one of a kind performances from these all the bands that stopped through the KXP yeah. You've got studio. the presidency of the United States here. You've got it, yeah. Um, and Nico that's what, Case. And that's what people. was fun about this one. We took in studios from long time ago yeah. and ones just from recent so this one spans you know huh. a few decades and it, uh, it's just it, it was a fun project and uh my dear friend and co-worker morgan had a huge hand in putting this together but i was thinking the other day you must have met and seen some people through the radio station that are pretty amazing, I would think. You yeah, know? yeah. Well, and especially when I uh, get to host or do the interview, yeah. being in the room with this band and being five feet away from them and seeing what they do yeah. is just an incredible experience. It's kind of like the best seat in the house. Yeah, yeah. And recently, uh, they were like, "Hey, can you come in and interview the band Modern English?" Oh. And I was like, "You mean the one-hit wonder I <laughs> melt with you band?" Like, I was like, "They're still a band." Yeah. And uh, they're like, "Oh yeah, they're touring." And the whole thing huh. and I kind of was like all right I'll I'll go do this yeah, yeah and it's kind of be kind of funny I go in there and my mind was blown first of all I had no idea their first album is amazing all their albums are actually pretty amazing a lot of those English and I, I think they're English bands right yeah they would have a one-hit wonder here but then they would have a whole 
career yeah. elsewhere. You know, yeah. Like Spandau Ballet. Like mm -hmm. we know True, but they would have all these other songs in Europe, right? Sure. Exactly. And I Melt With You is one of those rare songs that's like known all over the world. It's oh, just yeah. like in the lexicon did, of our human fabric. Did, right? That song probably, through royalties, have bought them cars and houses. So and I asked them in the interview, which you can see in YouTube world, it, I asked him straight up. I was like, please tell me and millions of us who will never experience what <laughs> you went through, what that's like to have a song that popular. Yeah. And he was like, Paid for all of our houses. Yeah, and, I bet. Uh, you know, paid they for still play it today. It, to this day, and to be five feet away from that, yeah. from that magic and that song, like written by those people and sang yeah, by those sure. people, I felt like I was like let in on a magic spell or something. It was, <laughs> it was. So that's the great uh, part about hosting those in studios is that they're just such a unique, one of a kind experience. And then to to collect a bunch of them yeah. and press them on vinyl hmm. as a as a as a treat for vinyl lovers and for people who listen to the radio station, so I wanted to share that. Yeah, that is really, really cool. Volume 10, huh? Yes. That's cool, dude. Yeah, thank you. All right. Well, <laughs> man, I'll tell you what. Yeah, definitely going from one... It, it's hard to transition from these... Yeah, because <laughs> from, from, we don't know. Uh, yeah. yeah, and you're going to laugh. So now we're going to go to Winger. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, that's always going to be funny. <laughs> so, I have... So, Winger has been putting out vinyl of some of their earlier albums. So that's a, an album from 1993 called Pole. 93? Yeah, it's considered, yeah. So I don't think that ever actually got a vinyl release until like this year. Okay. But it's an excellent album. And then this is their brand new album, New Winger, that just came out. Okay, I did uh, like satellite radio or something. I was like, Kip Winger's still going. Dude, and you know what? They're actually more respected now than I think that they were back then. Yeah, because back then they they really they, oh. they took a lot of heat, and also yeah. you know there was like the Beavis and Butthead, like the, Metallica, th uh, Metallica throwing the dart, which I just saw that they apologized. I for. I was just going to mention that that they officially apologized to Kip for for doing that. That's nice of Metallica. Yeah, so I kind of feel like that's the reason why I want to throw it in here because. Honestly, I've always been kind of like a closet winger fan because it hasn't been always cool to like them, but they're actually really good musicians. Mm -hmm. Kit Winger himself is a Grammy no nominated. He might actually be a winner of classical music. Mm, like the dude, it. yeah, like the dude can really compose. And uh, so I was listening to a, a podcast where he's talking about r the writing process of of classical music and kind of putting some of the more progressive parts into winger. And so they don't really get the the accolades they deserve, but I kind of want to show here that I'm a fan of Winger. They've got a brand new album out, and it's actually really good. So yeah, and you know what? If he is, and I'm sure he is, like a good guy, talented, yeah. and he, he he definitely got made fun of a lot. But you know what? He's probably made more money than everyone who's made fun of him. I like a band like Winger that just. D despite all of that, they still keep going. Yeah, they're yeah just like, he has a career. Yeah, yeah they're and, and true fans will follow them, follow them wherever they go as long as they keep making good music, which is pretty cool. I love that. I'm glad you shared that. Yeah, cool. Um, all right, so I am gonna bust out. All right, do you know anything about this? And I'm gonna be curious. Are you familiar with the Revolting Cox? Yes, kind of. So let me say it, it's a uh, ministry and somebody else, right? It's mostly ministry. Okay. It, Al Jorgensen from Ministry, it's just kind of his side project. Because they did a bunch of things also. They did, they did Pig or something like with, oh, with yeah. Trent Reznor. with Trent Reznor. Yeah. Yep, that's right. So I remember this one because it's got a great song on here, which is the uh, Do You Think I'm Sexy? Yes, the Rod Stewart cover. That's a great cover. I play this on the radio to this day. It's timeless. It's a fun record, actually, hmm. even though, you know, Ministry dark and industrial. Yeah, yeah. It, it, This has elements of that, but it's more like funny and huh. fun but the music's good also uh, Ministry's longtime drummer and who was a dear friend of mine that sadly passed away not too long ago Bill Rieflin uh, on drums one of the greatest drummers hmm. uh, but it's just such a fun record I think it came out in like it was early 90s this has to be a, like a new release right or a new version of this or, or like a like a repress yeah, like a repress I highly doubt it's original made in England so this one, it might be an huh like a yeah maybe I mean I remember working at a record store when this came out and again it was like one of those weird well yeah look yeah. at the out and it's called linger thick and good yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but i remember just playing it in the background at parties and stuff and it's actually like start to finish it's a great party album hmm. um it's it's very well done 
Wow, man, this is taking me back. Wow. Yeah. I haven't thought about this album in a long time. Yeah, so there you go. We're just jogging each other's memories yeah. and introducing each other to new stuff. And yeah, that. totally. All right, so next up for me is an album that came out during the pandemic I was very excited to see. It is John Petrucci's solo album. Mm. So John Petrucci is a guitarist for Dream Theater. Mm. The interesting thing about the pandemic was that a lot of bands, because they couldn't tour, took that opportunity to, to do whatever they've been putting on the back burner. And so uh, John putting out a solo album was one of those things. So he finally was able to do it. What's cool about this is that he actually got the original drummer for, from Dream Theater, Mike Portnoy, to play on it. Cool. So it's all instrumental guitar rock. Um, and just a fantastic album, actually. Awesome. I love like the matte finish yeah. the record covers yeah. with the little the gloss-y-ness. Yeah. Uh, that's it's great. very much in the style of like the Joe Satriani, the Steve Vai. Uh, also with a little bit of Jeff Beck in there. Uh, John Petrucci has always said that Jeff Beck is one of his in inspirations. And I can definitely see that now where he kind of has a little bit more jazzy moments in it. So. What kind of guitar is that? Had one, two, three? I think it's his five, guitar. So it's he, a seven string. You know, John Petrucci is popular enough now where he can actually have his own line of successful guitars. Right. So uh, that's I'm pretty sure that's what he plays, but yeah. Very cool. Yeah, instrumental guitar rock. I totally dig it. Uh, love it. Yep. Thank you. All right. Uh, let's talk about... We're going to go back to... How many do you have left? I mean, I have... I have two and then the game. Okay, so I have two as well. Okay. Uh, let's go back to 1970, 1971. Are you familiar? 70, 71. 70 or 71. Do you familiar with Rodriguez? Not even a little bit. Okay, I can't wait for you to, if you do want to explore huh. the world of Rodriguez. Yes, yes. So, that originally came out in 1970, 1971, and it just didn't go anywhere. It okay. didn't uh, do anything. What kind of music is it? It's, it's like psych folk rock psych folk rock. yeah and okay. it's hard to explain but here's the interesting thing is that many years later so he just like his music career didn't take off he, he recorded a second album that also didn't go anywhere hmm. and he just went back to work i think he was like a construction worker for, okay for decades and and people slowly started discovering this album huh. and it started to get it start getting huge in like south africa and like different parts of the world and then all of a sudden people started blogging once the internet started becoming more of a thing hmm. people were writing reviews about this saying what the hell this should be an american classic i think it was recorded in detroit hmm. and it, it, it start to finish it is a Stone Cold classic album. Okay, like, I want to hear this. There's there's fuzz guitars. There's elements of so much different type of music. There is a documentary called Finding Sugarman. Uh, Sugarman is the name of I think the opening track on on the album. It's his most popular song. Okay. But um, all of a sudden in like 2012, uh, Light in the Attic is the label that uh, reissued this, and all of a sudden everyone loved Rodriguez. But here he is in his like late 60s or 70s yeah. and people are he's going on tour and everyone's talking about Rodriguez and they made a movie uh, a documentary about him and everyone's celebrating this album but imagine putting an album out and 40 50 years later uh, you know finally everyone yeah. starts celebrating it wow and it's so and I'm glad and we just lost him he just uh, passed away but I'm so glad that he got to see yeah like people really loving his music when he probably thought it, it, nobody would ever hear it in his entire life so it's a very cool story the whole Rodriguez story is that that's cool. the thing about music as you know is that you can you can be a, ahead of your time and not go anywhere but then also you can just not have those little moments of luck that you sometimes need as an artist, you yep. know what I mean? Yep. That, that sometimes that just works against you, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, it, it was a hidden, this would be a hidden gem, yeah. but now lots of people know about it. But um, I, yeah. I will say though that, that at least with music, it is easier to kind of go back and rediscover stuff because the format of music doesn't really change. I mean, yeah, you've got streaming now, but that vinyl record, it was made back then and it will play on that stereo. Yeah, you know how mean? cool is that? Yeah. yeah, I love that stuff. Yeah. So, huh, okay, that's a cool story. All right, next up is something. Did you say folk or something? Yeah, like psych folk. Psych folk, yeah. Okay. Well, Cruachan, I think is how you pronounce their Irish name. Okay. The name of this album is The Living and the Dead. And this is. Wow, look at that is, album. Cover. This is Irish folk black metal. Cool. 
So, this band has been around since like 1995. They are one of the creators of Irish folk black metal. And what I mean by that is that, yes, they've got guitars and double kick bass, drums, but they've got tin whistles, they've got mandolins, they've got banjos, they've got cellos, they've got all the traditional parts of Irish folk music, and they got sing-along choruses, but then they'll do the scariest black metal vocals you've ever seen or heard. What? It's awesome. See, that's why I love doing <laughs> these these music pickup videos with you because I would. There's so many artists that I would have never known for yeah. the rest of my life, and I'm sure a lot of your viewers out there too. I would have never known about this. Yeah, I, I, I don't. It's it doesn't not come across here. my table, so to speak. Yeah, and the, the the feeling I get is that in the United States, obviously, we don't really have an avenue for this. They're not playing this on the radio, as far as I'm. Maybe on Sirius XM or something like that. Maybe. But I believe in Europe, this does have a little bit of a bigger following. I get that sense, and it'll be interesting down in the comments if people post that. Oh, I've been I've known about that band for years and years and years. But, anyways, this is their most current album. And uh, yeah, if, the, the way I was thinking about this is that if you feel like you've seen or heard every other me metal album on the planet, check this out. Because <laughs> you haven't heard that yet. <laughs> awesome. I yeah, can't... it's pretty cool. All right, I can't wait to hear that. Yeah. Um, all right, so this is my last vinyl and then I have the game. Okay, I'll now I just have one, one more too. All right, so this I wanted to show you and um, I mean, it's a small plug for my tiny label, Kill Room Records, oh, that we course. we put out the Metal Jesus yes, 7 did. Inch, the Metal Jesus Sold theme Sold out song. in like two hours. Uh, I think it was like more like two seconds. So yeah, <laughs> it's like, it went live at 9 a.m. I was just like, well, those are gone. It's yeah. funny because you and I were like, is this going to sell out? We yeah. have no idea. Yeah. Did, you know? we, did we press too little, too many? Like, yeah, well, we had yeah. no idea. Yeah, yeah. it was gone. We're like, oh, we could have made like 500 more. I know. Yeah. <laughs> But um, so this is an artist that I think that also you would like. I'm not bringing this just to be like, oh, Killer Room Records. Also, this is uh, uh, Johnny Nails is uh, one of Seattle's most well-known like hard rock guitar players, hmm. and this guy's played in so many bands. Huh. And this is his solo album, and I think you'll dig this artwork right there. Oh, there you go. And uh, that looks like some of the White Snake album would use, right? It totally <laughs> yeah. classic White Snake album. Yeah, um, it's hard rock. It's catchy. I would put it in there with like Foo Fighters, Queens of the Stone Age. Oh, really? You know? Okay. And uh, so we're excited to put out his his solo record under his name, Johnny Nails, which he's once again he's just been playing in so many bands uh, for mm. so many years. So many bands want him in their band. He also is a fantastic engineer and producer. He records things himself, mixes things himself, and uh, so his record's going to be coming out soon. Wow, okay. But, but I wanted to share it with you since uh, it, it's just in the wheelhouse of Metal Jesus Rock. I want to hear this album. That sounds absolutely up my, uh, up, up my angle. Up, up, my, up, up my alley? Up, up my alley. Up yeah. my butt. There up we go. Your, up your, it's right up your butt. Oh, you got a clear vinyl, too. Clear vinyl. That's cool. Yeah. I, I do like clear vinyl. Awesome. All right, you got one final one? I do. And a band that has been following me for years reached out. They are a fan of my YouTube channel. Cool. And that band is called Evile. I have been a fan of this band before they sent me the albums. Actually, I've always had their their CDs, and they're like, "Dude, we love your YouTube channel. We want to send you." Uh, a, this is a little bit of an older one, and that's a brand new one right there. But they are a thrash metal band. I believe they're from England, um, and it's like this one right here is old school testament you know like mm. early metallica style really fast riffy stuff cool this one right here the newer one the unknown is more slower plotting kind of like uh the black album era of metallica cool and they're just and they just fami they're familiar with your channel and they yeah gonna... they reached out to me through an email they're like hey dude we love your videos we uh you know we love what you're all about can we send you a couple of our albums and and i was like well actually i'm already a fan so yeah <laughs> sure that's cool. This so. is so cool. Like, yeah. They're like mutual fans, friends. They signed them for you. I know, dude. Yeah, pretty cool, huh? That is so awesome. I was, okay. I was very happy with I that. I mean, I grew up on thrash metal. Like, that is, that's how I got into music, was yeah. thrash metal. Old Testament. Testament's album, I think, what was it called? Souls of Black, or was that the name of one of their songs? Uh, they have an album called The Ritual. 
Yeah. Um, and that album like yeah. changed me. And early Metallica, Megadeth, and all that stuff. Oh, but yeah, I just yeah. love uh, thrash metal. And especially that bands are still doing thrash metal yeah. to this day. I almost showed in this video the new Megadeth album. Yeah. You know, The Sick, The Dying, and the Dead. But mm -hmm. it was like, it's getting a little long, and everyone knows about that one. But yeah, yeah, I still buy it. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm still in there. <laughs> Absolutely. You just uh, need to kind of kick ass sometimes, so. And I can't wait for people that, if they're unfamiliar with any of the stuff that we show, that they go and check it out. And, Absolutely. And, and that we hopefully expand your musical palette out there. Maybe you'll find your new favorite artist. That's true. And your I, favorite band. I'll put the link to all the albums that we showed in this video down in the video description below. So, Great. yeah, definitely check them out. And so, uh, love this. you have one more thing. And it's a game. Okay. Uh, it, it, it actually does have an awesome soundtrack, but uh, there is this uh, collector's edition of this game that I've wanted for a long time and to add to my game room. Okay. And one day I finally just was like, you know what? I'm getting on eBay. I'm buying this thing. Uh -oh. I'm, I'm sick of waiting to see if I find it at an expo yeah, or whatever yeah. the case. Huh. But it has to be one of the most inventive shoot 'em ups in the history of shoot 'em ups. That's on the, a lot. on the Sega Saturn, I'm talking about the game Paradise. Oh. And yes. this version comes with a cute em up. Uh, yeah, a cute em up. It's <laughs> yeah. So cute, so cool, so creative. And uh, so this is the Japanese, re this is the Japanese release. Yeah. It, exactly. And I have that cartridge that you stick in the side yeah, yeah. so you can play the uh, Japanese release. And this has, uh, like, it comes with a VHS. Oh, dude, that's hilarious. Which I have not watched yet. I don't know what's on this VHS. Huh. And, and uh, yes, obviously the game itself. A lot, a lot of times with shooters, this would be tips and tricks. Mm. So, actually, I'm trying to remember that I think a lot of Japanese uh, games would come with, yeah, like how, like tips to beat some of the shooters. Okay. That, that, that's what that could be. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. But this one just looks uh, wild uh, as far as like how hard it is. It's just oh. like chaos. Oh, right? it is absolutely. But again, yeah, yeah some of the, some these cute em ups are kind of de uh, deceptive because they look like they'd be kind of easy. But no, they'll destroy you. Yeah, totally. Yeah, and I <laughs> love it. They'll, yeah, they'll wipe the floor with you. It's pretty funny. Yeah, I'm a huge fan of shoot 'em ups and Wow. Uh, I bet you this was not cheap. It wasn't super cheap. And that's yeah. why I kind of waited for a while. But, you know, I think it was even during the lockdown of yeah. the pandemic. I was like, you know what? Uh, I got my stimulus check. I'll, I'll. You know what? I'll, um, do it. I'll pull the trigger. There, there, <laughs> no pun intended. We, we, we have games where we're just like, you know what? I love that game so much. I just, I'm gonna do it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yep. Huh, that's, that's cool, dude. But once again, uh, thank you so much for having me. It's yeah. been a little too long. I mean, you and I have hung out in the interim of these yeah. videos, but I always appreciate doing these videos with you and uh, talking with the Metal Jesus community. It's, uh, it's yeah. a pleasure, so thank you. You are kind of my, my brother when it comes to music. Like, I'm always amazed when we hang out just how similar but also different we are. So yes. we're always kind of like... Like some of my, my favorite memories, I think during the, was it right before the pandemic where we were watching like live Metallica and Def Leppard, mm -hmm. in, like in my game room. Oh yeah, so loud. Oh yeah, <laughs> it was like we're at a concert. Yeah, <laughs> when when you and I have crossover, it's deep. And yeah, it's yeah, like, it is. Oh, we both know how much we love that band, and then there's stuff that we don't know that <laughs> yeah. that the other person does, and it's nice to share that too. So these are always yeah. So yeah, much fun. I, I love that about your radio station. Not to get back to that, but just that it, it, their radio station plays everything. From Van Halen to rock to metal to jazz to um, electronic, electronic reggae. Mm -hmm. You do uh, surf music. I mean, it's yeah. amazing. So you bring all that to this, which is yeah. cool. So. Yeah, absolutely. And let's do it again sometime soon. And so, where can people find you out on the internet and find these wacky videos that you were talking sure. about? Sure, you can go to Instagram. I post a lot of the wackiness there. Yeah. Uh, it's just my name, Troy Nelson, but with three L's. That's because the, it's wacky. Well, but yeah, because there's a billion people with a last sure. name Nelson. So yeah, Troy Nelson with three L's, and that's pretty much where you can see all the things that I do. But, awesome. Uh, yeah. All right. Well, thanks for coming on, dude. Thanks for watching, and take care.